Welcome into the Daily Illini Sports Podcast. It's Josh Peace, joined as usual with Carson Gordy. And today we have a special guest from the Star Tribune in Wyoming. It's Ryan Thorburn. Uh, how's it going, Ryan? Thanks for coming on. Hey, my pleasure. Good to be with you guys. So what's it like covering the Wyoming football team? I know that you said you've been there for a couple of years. What's it like covering them and this uh, hard head coach that you have? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I actually grew up in Wyoming and went to Wyoming. And then uh, after I got done, I worked in Boulder for 13 years covering the Broncos and then the Buffs. And then the last eight years before I came back home, I was covering Oregon for the Register Guard in Eugene. So I've been away for a long time. And now that I'm back, it, it's it's kind of strange, but, you know, just I followed the team from afar and, you know, obviously I knew that Craig Bull had wild success at North Dakota state. And if you recall the time he was hired at Wyoming nine years ago, you know, a lot of national writers were surprised he was going to Wyoming and thought maybe he would be in the big 10, you know, building a program somewhere in the big 10. So, you know, I think it's just a, it's a good fit because he's kind of a, a hard nosed guy and Wyoming fans like the fact that his whole philosophy is built on running the ball and, being physical and and that sort of thing. Now, as they win six, seven, eight games most years and go to you know minor bowl games, there is a faction of the fan base that would like to see them open it up a little bit and get more creative on offense and maybe you know take a step closer to winning a Mountain West championship, which is really the only thing that's eluded him. And I know you guys up in Illinois are. are going through that same experiment right now after kind of a, a subpar passing year, trying to mix it up with a new offensive coordinator. So uh, Wyoming's not doing that. They're going to run the ball. They're going to use tight ends and fullbacks and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, the fit between Craig Bull and Wyoming is a good one. And uh, you know, it is interesting covering him because he's old school, but I think he does respect um, newspapers and, and journalists and stuff like that, even though he gets cranky sometimes. Wyoming used to be known as like the stepping stone for a lot of coaches. Like Joe Tiller had a lot of success at Wyoming and really used like the air raid offense. So like this year, like it's going to be a smash mouth approach, but what do you expect from the quarterback position for Wyoming? Yeah, that's really an area where they've struggled since uh, they had a guy named Josh Allen. You might've heard of. I think he's decent. Is he on the bills? Yeah, I think he's on the Bills. He's he's uh, a fantasy football guy. No, um, yeah, obviously they hit a home run with Josh Allen, and and that kind of put him on the map. And he pretty much carried them to a Mountain West Championship game in in 2016, and had them in the mix for that again in 17, and then and suffered an injury, and they lost some games they shouldn't have uh, when he was out. So since he left, you know, five years ago, they've really struggled at the quarterback position, finding that replacement just having anyone efficient, Um, both guys that started last year have transferred out and they're the guy we're expecting. Now, both coaches obviously are playing the cloak and dagger. We're not naming a starter thing, but I think we all know it. It's probably going to be Andrew Peasley for Wyoming, Utah state transfer. And I'm guessing you guys probably think it's going to be the Syracuse transfer to Illinois. So um, that's the age we live in transfer guys come in, they go out and, they think Peasley is much more accurate. Uh, he's a quicker runner than the, the other guys they had last year, Sean Chambers and Levi Williams, who transferred to Utah State of all places. Uh, Peasley has joked it's the first trade in college football history. Um, but anyway, those guys were bigger guys. He's smaller but quicker and more accurate. So they're going to want him to pass maybe 20 times in this game and complete 15 of them. And if he does that, they'll have a shot. If he doesn't, it could be a long day. So Wyoming was obviously hit pretty hard by the transfer portal this year. One of those guys being Isaiah Nair, who went to Texas. I don't know if I'm uh, pronouncing his name properly, but he averaged 20 yards per catch last year and he had 12 scores. So that's a big loss. So what's the receiving core looking like for the Cowboys this year? Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of program Wyoming has. I mean, Josh Allen had zero stars coming out. Nobody wanted him. He went to junior college. Wyoming was the only team that wanted him after his year at junior college. Nayor was the same way, just lightly recruited Texas guy. Comes to Wyoming, and last year, obviously, he was looking like a five-star guy. Now he's at Texas. Unfortunately for him, he tore an ACL during their scrimmage, so he's 
he's out this year, but uh, both quarterbacks last year really just leaned heavily into Nayor when in obvious passing situations, the whole stadium knew it was going to him. The defensive coordinators knew it was going to him. And he still had that kind of success. And they airmailed some balls over his head where he would add more success. So it's going to be more by committee this year. They don't have a star like that. They're going to spread the ball around. The tight end room is their best room on this team. So they're going to probably finally utilize those guys, not only as run blockers, but catching the ball. And, and that's what Peasley needs is some bootlegs to the big tight ends and then spread it around. They have a couple of veteran guys. Joshua Cobbs, is, who played alongside Nayor, will now be the number one guy. And then uh, they have a guy named Wyatt Wheeland who's been around forever, but he's going to be more of that possession receiver. And they have uh, you know a freshman from St. Louis, Caleb Merritt. I don't know if he'll play in this game other than special teams, but he's going to be a factor this year. He's a speedy guy from St. Louis. And uh, you know I know he'll have a lot of family going up to Illinois. So um, they have some weapons, but there's not going to be a stud receiver like Naor. So on the offensive side of the ball, it seems like it's going to be three yards in a cloud of dust. But what about defensively? Last season, Wyoming kind of struggled defending the run, right? 99th in the country. Illinois really wants to run the ball with Chase Brown and their offensive line. So what adjustments have Wyoming made, the Cowboys, to get a more stout run defense? Yeah, I mean, they lost a lot on defense from last year, and some of it could be addition by subtraction. You know, they had lost both corners and three defensive ends to the portal. And then Chad Muma, their middle linebacker, All-American, was drafted by the Jaguars. So they have a really young group and a lot of new guys in there. Um, the Mike linebacker is Easton Gibbs, who moves over from the weak side. I think they really like him. He's not an NFL prototype like Muma or Logan Wilson before him, but he's going to be a hundred tackle type of guy. He's really fast. And they love their interior of their defensive line with Cole Goodbow, who's from the state of Wisconsin, a big, he dreamed obviously of playing for Wisconsin. Now he gets a chance to, to show out in a big 10 game and Jordan Bernoulli, the, the other defensive tackle there, they really were great last year and they, kind of ruined the spring game because they were just blowing everything up. So they feel good about the, the middle of the defense and they replaced the corners with, you know, Ja'Cory Hawkins from Ole Miss and Deron Harrell from Wisconsin. So they used the portal the other way there and feel good about that. But defensive end is really a problem. Now I know Illinois, if they run the ball and they want to run it up the middle, that, that could be an interesting matchup, but defensive end they've lost, you know, all those portal guys, and then they had their best defensive end, Sebastian Harsh, suffer what sounds like a pretty serious injury last week. So he's out for this game for sure. And uh, so I think that's something Illinois is probably aware of and can exploit if they really want to pass the ball and, and try their new um, offensive coordinators type of scheme. But, you know, when push comes to shove, I'm sure both teams are going to want to just establish the run and go from there. So Bowles is a defensive guy, right? Former defense coordinator at Nebraska. What's kind of his philosophy? Is it an aggressive approach? Is it man coverage, zone coverage? Like what should fans expect to see on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, with the previous corners, they were able to leave those guys on an island a lot and, and rush with four. Um, I think with this group and the defensive ends being such a liability or at least an unknown, uh, I think you're going to see their defensive coordinator, Jay Savell, try to um, change things up a little bit, blitz a little bit more than they did last year. You know, they have a, a nickel named Keontae Glint Glinton, who I think could be a good blitzer. They're going to have to with, with their defensive end situation until they can find some guys. And they weren't great rushing the passer last year, even though they had a bunch of super seniors. So um, that is going into this game, the glaring weakness for Wyoming on defense is the pass rush from the edge. And it'll be interesting to see how they try to uh, alleviate that or if they have to. I mean, they, they've really been talking about, you know, studying the, the Roadrunners tape to figure out this coordinator. And also, you know, Bull knows Bielema quite well and knows he's an offensive line run the ball guy. So I think Illinois has that edge and that Wyoming's really not sure exactly what they're going to try to do to him. Yeah, so the line on ESPN opened up at Illinois minus 10, which is probably a lot closer than some people thought. Surely everyone in Champaign thought it would be a little bit bigger than that. 
So, I mean, what do you think Wyoming has to do to make this thing competitive? Do you just have to run the ball and hope to, you know, exploit an unproven Illinois defense or, you know, is there more than that? I think Craig Bull, or maybe it was their offensive coordinator, one of them summed it up best that, you know, they have such a young team. They're the third youngest team in the FBS this year after being the third oldest last year. So there's so much new and so many guys, even though Peasley's a veteran, he's new to Wyoming, new to starting they just can't make fatal mistakes, you know, and that's what they did last year, particularly in the Boise state game. I mean, they could have won that game at Boise. It wasn't a great Boise team, but they just had so many false starts and, you know, did not execute in the middle eight kicking field goals and allowing a field goal and just self imploded. And that's what they can't do. They can't have turnovers and penalties. They just have to play clean and they'll be in the game. Exactly. All right, Ryan. Well, thank you so much for going on. Uh, good luck to you and shout out to Star Tribune in Wyoming. But yeah, Ryan, appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Maybe I'll see you Saturday. Appreciate it. Take care. Sure.